he starts to back off now. There he is at the side of the track. So Wayne Clark's Castrol Australian TT is over. 0.6 of a second over the leading three. Now Sutcliffe all over the back of Stroud, down through the S's. Not much passing room down here for the mo motorcycles. The Dipper. Conservative there where Graham Crosby used to do a mono wheel going downhill through the Dipper. And great Mitchell down the inside. There by Scott Mitchell, third. Now the Mitchell. Five of them. Second. And Mitchell now clings to the back of Stroud's Britain. Let's see just what the Bigley twin can do as Mitchell pulls out of the draft alongside. Yeah, that miss is really working against the Britain. Because each of them just blown away. But look at Mitchell go now down on Green Tree and a new leader. The race leader through and with a nice lead. On 15 and then this battle. Tremendous in the second place. Stroud dispatched unceremoniously to fourth, pla fourth place on the road, third in the bunch. Come out of Forrest's elbow now and pour it on. Jack Forrest himself, the winner of the Australian TT back in 1951. And the holder of the Australian land speed record about four years later on uh, a BMW Rennsport, an ex-sidecar machine at about 160 miles an hour I think it was won't swear by it but it was something of that order into the Caltex Jason again Stroud down the inside reclaims his second position as they pour off the top there and really brave around the outside green tree this is exactly why Wayne Gardner says he doesn't like racing motorcycles here my goodness you've got to have your heart in your mouth haven't you Andrew Stroud's got to use more track than that if he's going to stop these guys rounding him up and giving him a hard time So seven laps completed, eight remain. 6.213 kilometres each. There's the race leader, Scott Mitchell, lonely ride for him now. Sort of half of mountain straight between him and the next is Stroud and again moves up into second position. And Mitchell's lead is just on seven seconds now as he reaches the halfway point with the Castrol Australian TT. The battle is Sutcliffe on 75 and even further back, John Allen on four. There's your race leader, Scott Mitchell, momentarily as we look through the heat haze coming up Mountain Straight and look back about nine to ten seconds to see these bikes maybe just pouring the front wheel in the air as they come up over the top, just a little bit here. Certainly on 89, on, uh, on Etherington's bike, its front wheel was, uh, was certainly getting air. And you can see the bikes behind just going off the battle a little bit. Lap record at Bathurst is 2 minutes 18.48 seconds set by Mike Dowson on the Yamaha 1000 back in 1988 in the last of the RI 500 races held here. These bikes lapping about 4 to 5 seconds slower which is about what you'd expect given the fact that they haven't had much miles at Bathurst in the last few years. And it is such a daunting circuit, perhaps one of the most daunting circuits in world motorcycle racing. The big problem for the, uh, the bikes this weekend was that there is Next weekend, after uh, a superbike race at Phillip Island last weekend, next weekend there's an, another Australian Championship round at uh, Wanneroo Circuit in Western Australia. So uh, Chris Bomadier, for instance, who is teammate to Green Tree, has gone there. And the TZ 250 is very good over through the handling section. Clinging on, but he can hear them behind him. He hasn't looked behind him. There are no uh, rear view mirrors on these bikes, of course. And as he goes across uh, McPhillamy Park and heading for Skyline, whoop -ah! Gotcha. But it's a matter of find your own way and make your own way around. Now line up the dipper. And the bike gets right through there. So is it Green Tree who in fact gained the advantage out of that? I think it may be. Yes, it is. Green Tree gained the advantage. He got through the little CZ 250 across the top and opened up just a little bit of a security gap on Andrew Stroud. So now Stroud's got to do all that work to find his way back again as these three race for the minor position. 
Craig Stroud. Sutcliffe just getting back on them a little bit in 75. Very much so. And Stroud not making a great deal of advantage at all on Greentree. So the TZ250 with Scott Sullivan has probably done the, uh, the outright places for the, uh, the Castrol Australian TT. Some favour, at least at the front of the field. Stuart Hamilton's way on 63. Oh dear, oh me! Rock Big gone. trouble and a sort of a high sider and the air fence hopefully doing the job there. You saw how it happened. That's Craig Sutcliffe. Locked up and got a little bit offline. He'd got back to this bunch. High side through there is not a thing to have happen. Well, he just locked up a tad. Here that it is threw here. him offline. Have a look. Right behind. Here he is, just a little bit offline. He's locking gone up the sideways. Back end. Oh dear. And then it's thrown him over the. Didn't go very high up, but unfortunately the fence is very close. Fortunately, the bike moved away from him right at the last moment, so the bike didn't follow him into the fence, and that's uh, quite a critical situation because, of course, uh, a lot of mass in that motorcycle moving at high speed, and the last thing you want to do is to be crushed between it and the fence. See the way the air fence there is at an angle, so at the join. Riders up, you beaut, riders up. That's sensational. Its job. So it really did its job. The struggle you saw was the rider trying to find his way out of the air fencing. So again, this sensational Australian invention has done its job. Isn't that wonderful? Bike 15 on lap 15. Two corners remaining, now one. Well done, Scott Mitchell. <laughs> Don't muck up on the left hand to get both hands on the bars and the right cog selected as he heads to the finishing line. Scott Mitchell on bike number 15, victorious in the Castrol Australian Solo TT at Mount Panorama Battles, heat two. Here's second the battle place. now goes on for second place between Etherington and Andrew Stroud, and it's Etherington to take the honours as he goes across the line about 15 and a half seconds in arrears to Scott Mitchell. Stroud right on him for third place.